All right, everyone, we're going to uh, start off today talking about the TikTok ban bill. As you will see, it is much more than that, and it's very troublesome. It effectively boils down to being a digital Patriot Act. Now, I say this as a qualified defense. I do not use TikTok. I have no interest in using TikTok. Number one, I have more, uh, an attention span beyond 60 seconds. I tend to do longer form content, like this video. It is run by the Chinese Communist Party. You should not use TikTok. It is a bad idea, and uh, it, it's unhelpful. It, basically, it's, uh, it's just distracting people. It's become the opiate of the masses, so to speak. You know, Marx would probably approve. Uh, but that being said, this particular bill is not really the way to address the problems that are inherent with a foreign platform that's run by an adversarial third-party country, uh, which w by, by literal communists. I would point out that the people in Congress, by and large, are invested in China. So, it's a little bit mysterious as to why they would have a problem with TikTok now, isn't it? Most people in Congress are invested with China. Certainly the Bidens have done steady business there. So why on earth would they want this bill? Why would they cut off their nose to spite their face? We're going to find out by reading the abstract of the bill. I think it's in section four. It's a, it gets even worse, but first let's read the abstract. This is the summary for the 118th Congress, 23 to 24, HR 7521, AKA the TikTok ban bill. Uh, shown here, introduced by the House, Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act. Let's read. This bill prohibits distributing, maintaining, or providing internet hosting services for a foreign adversary controlled application, e.g. TikTok. However, the prohibition does not apply to a covered application that executes a qualified divestiture as determined by the President. Oh, how lovely. I really want Biden to control what uh, internet sites I can use, by the way. That's a great idea. Under the bill, a foreign adversary controlled application is directly or indirectly operated by 1. ByteDance Limited or TikTok, including their subsidiaries or successors. Okay, so that's a very, very specific bill that you're making now. Oh, shit. Or 2. A social media company that is controlled by a foreign adversary and has been determined by the president to present a significant threat to national security. Again, total malleability. This is the Digital Patriot Act. The problem is that you have total malleability in what site is determined to be a significant uh, a threat to national security. So one site will be controlled by a company that invested a million dollars in your re-election campaign, you probably lost that one over and say, well, there's a problem there, we'll have an informal conversation over some green tea and everything's fine. Another company didn't invest with your re-election campaign, so you throw the book at them. Differential enforcement, that's exactly what this bill is for. Uh, the prohibition does not apply to an application that is primarily used to post product reviews, business reviews, or travel information and reviews. So, the Chinese uh, Communist Party is not allowed to manipulate you into uh, communism, you know, on a social media site, but they're allowed to uh, fuck with the travel reviews. Yeah, Beijing, uh, highly rated. Yeah, that's, again, wonderful. The bill authorizes the Department of Justice to investigate violations of the bill and enforce the bill's provisions. And uh, entities that violate the bill are subject to civil pen uh, penalties based on their number of users. Yeah, they're going to be going after uh, some social media firms. It's not going to be TikTok in the end, though. Uh, I can guarantee that. The bill requires a covered application to provide a user with all available account data, including posts, photos, and videos at the user's request before the prohibition takes effect. Well, I mean, that makes sense. Uh, user data should be in the hands of the user. So I guess there's one part of the bill. There's always a silver lining to every cloud now, ain't it? The bill gives the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia, so this is the D.C. Court, uh, exclusive jurisdiction over any challenge to the bill. In other words, if a Republican administration makes use of this provision, they're going to get shot down. If a Democratic administration makes the provision, uh, uh, utilizes the provision, they will automatically prevail in a court of law. Do you sense a little bit of pig in a pokery here? A little bit of liberalism? Further, a challenge to the bill must be brought within 165 days of after the bill's enactment date. 
A challenge to any action, finding, or determination under the bill must be brought within 90 days of the action, finding, or determination. Now, we're going to go to the basic text of the bill. And we're going to see if we can uh, find this particular section. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Oh, yes. I believe that this is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Foreign Adversary Controlled Application. The term Foreign Adversary Controlled Application, this is Section 3 of the bill, means a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology, so AI application, that is operated directly or indirectly, including through a parent company, subsidiary, or affiliate, by A, any of. Number 1, ByteDance Limited. Number 2, TikTok. Number 3, a subsidiary or successor to, an enter, uh, to either of those. Number four, an entity owned or controlled directly or indirectly by an entity identified in clause one, two, or three. Or, B, and this is the interesting section, one, is controlled by a foreign adversary, and two, that it is determined by the president to present a significant threat to national security of the United States following the issuance of, one, a public notice proposing such determination, so basically it's my opinion, brah, or two, a public report to Congress submitted not less than 30 days before such determination. And uh, then it goes on and on. Now, here's the problem. And I've brought up the basic premise before. It's like with spying, right? If you're a United States citizen, the government is not directly allowed to spy on you in a wanton manner. You have Fourth Amendment rights. You have the basic right to privacy. There's a system to issue warrants, etc., etc. The government goes around this by utilizing the Five Eyes uh, Treaty, number one, and other NATO countries, number two, as a backup uh, through data sharing. So the UK's government can spy on you. They don't need a warrant because you're not a citizen of the UK. The US government can spy on a British citizen, and it's perfectly fine because they're not a citizen of the United States. The constitutions and the normal legal protections don't actually take place. They don't have any effect. It's a foreign country. So they simply data share. Why do I get the feeling that this is effectively a methodology by which the United States is going to partner up with the European tyrants over there and try to cross-train to censor off chunks of the internet that are facilitating free speech? Why do I get the feeling that that's the real goal here? And it's real, real interesting, by the way, that this bill was proposed only mere days after Joe Biden joined TikTok and uh, got routinely hazed there by the Gaza protesters. Oh, what a coincidence. How often it happens. It's almost like when Eric Adams got raided by the FBI a couple of weeks after he criticized Joe Biden's uh, border crisis. I mean, come on, dude. You can't possibly think that this is acceptable. You can't possibly not smell a rat. The fact that the U.S. House passed this bill is retarded on its head. Hopefully it gets bogged down in Senate proceedings and goes nowhere. It's not a TikTok ban. It's a we can ban whatever the fuck we want at. It's a we're going to cross train with other Western countries and be able to censor whatever the fuck we want at. It's the we're demurring to the DC fucking Court of Appeals, the most liberal court in the goddamn country, on any litigation with regards to the use of this act deal. It's a pig in a poke. It's the Digital Patriot Act, can't you see? And then they were worrying, they were, they were sad about this TikTok when users were signing in the other day. They uh, had a thing to uh, call, you know, members of Congress that may be applicable to uh, your district to uh, tell them not to ban TikTok. I don't give a fuck about TikTok. I give a fuck about the other sites that are inevitably going to be targeted under this bill. Fuck TikTok, I'm never going to use it. I'm not interested in looking at 13-year-olds uh, at, at, at rambling and raving endlessly with the uh, talentless short-style bullshit that they have with uh, random music and random text talking about, uh, I don't know, uh, what, what uh, fucking color of skin they feel like today. I don't give a shit about that, and that seems to be the gist of short-form content. It's pretty brainless. But uh, no... If it's between banning TikTok, but also having the President of the United States and Congress able to ban literally anything that goddamn want. VPNs, fucking uh, random social media sites. Hell, maybe they determine, well, the dude who runs 4chan is Japanese. That basically makes it uh, an element of foreign adversarial and, and hostile nature, because Hiroshima mood is not the same as the original mood. Yeah, it's a U.S. firm, but, you know, the, the parent of the company is basically from Japan, so, you know, we're banning it. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, this could rip apart the entire internet and disembowel it completely and remove free speech almost entirely from it, completely subjugating it to a chief executive. 
And I see some people mysteriously that are not particularly concerned about this bill. This is literally, it's like dropping an atomic bomb on the internet. You're giving Joe Biden and any future president effectively unilaterally control over what Americans can see or hear. This is in direct defiance to the First Amendment in every way, shape, or form. It does not matter whether it targets only foreign entities. Those can be used to facilitate speech too. Look, the United States has been caught slacking when it comes to the free speech issue now for some time. That's exactly what this bill is for. That's about all. Peace out.